Um, I've got a question for you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay. This was your first movie as a director. What would you say was your biggest challenge for your first time as a director? Uh, mainly time and money. We didn't have that much time. and I mean, it, it's, it's a sizable amount of money when you hear it, but considering what our ambitions were, it was really tight. So I think um, primarily just time and money were the biggest challenges. Okay. And traditional zombie films portray the living dead as mindless walking corpses hell-bent on eating human flesh. Mm -hmm. But you've given them a voice, so what was the inspiration for this particular angle in zombies in America? Um, I think there's two inspirations. I mean, it it's definitely, it was more of an unconscious thing that popped up, but um, I think Dawn of the Dead has Dud, who, he has some semblance of sentience. And then um, there's this movie, uh, The Midnight Hour, from the 80s, that... Um, it's not explicitly like set up that the girl is a zombie, but the assumption is she's a zombie and she's completely sentient. So I think those two things influenced me, but I, at the time it wasn't conscious. Yeah. Um, did you have to watch a lot of zombie films in preparation for writing Life After Beth, or were you already a fan? I, I'd seen them all, um, but I didn't want to sort of employ the tropes that they use. I wanted to kind of just find my own angle in. And um, so I probably hadn't watched a zombie movie for a couple of years before I had written it. Uh, was there room for improvisation or did you want the lines set as written since you wrote the script? It, the movie was entirely improvised. Like we didn't have any, any script at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, it was mostly, it was, the majority of it was written and then there was room for improvisation. We would do um, rehearsals and then if anything cool came up in the rehearsals, we would try to fit it in there, but for the most part it was mainly as scripted. Okay. Um, what do you think the quality of modern horror films is in comparison to the past era? Past era being the 80s or the 70s or just the past in general? Just the past in general, yeah. Uh, I think it's not as good. I think, you know, older films I think went for sort of a gritty naturalism and were more grounded and character based and now it's for the most part, it's it's the spectacle, and it doesn't hold as much for me. I also and I also like. I mean, in addition to the supernatural kind of horror movies that I like, um, like The Shining and The Exorcist and stuff like that, I also like Giallo's, like from the seventies. So I like all kinds of horror movies, and I don't think there's anything today that really is as good as it used to be. It, it's not that it's been done before, but people I think are just looking for sensational. I think big sort of set piece kind of action instead of finding like the grounded humanistic quality that I think makes the older movies better. All right, um, I've got a question for you. Right, um, what do you think independent filmmakers or storytellers can offer you that you don't get from the bigger projects? Um, I mean, I think bigger projects mean like studio movies, I think a lot of them are really just franchises now and, you know, like big superhero action kind of movies, so independent films are kind of allow you to play like, I don't know, so many different kinds of characters and um, characters that might not be appealing to like a big mass audience, um, but are really unique in their own way. Right. Um, you've done like improv, stand-up, film, and TV acting. What led you to pursue so many different forms of comedy? Um, I don't know. I In high school I was a really big Saturday Night Live um, fan and then I became, then I got really obsessed with improv and sketch comedy and I really liked watching like that Bright Citizens for Gay TV show and the state and um, like so many different <laughs> groups um, and I, I've just always had an interest in all areas of movies and TV and filmmaking and everything so I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you always want to be a comedy performer? Um, I always wanted to be an actor and I never really knew what that was what would happen, but I really did, I was really drawn to comedy, you know, when I was younger, I really liked, like I said, I liked Saturday Night Live and stuff, and 
but um, I don't know. Right. Yes. And do you think comedy, comic book abilities, are something someone either has or doesn't, or do you think it's something that can be learned? Comedic ability. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. I think. I think comedy comes from an, I don't know where it comes from, but I do think that some people are just naturally funny and some people aren't. But I, you can learn how to do improv, but it doesn't mean, I, it doesn't mean you'll, you'll be funny, but you can learn how to do it. But I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay this, this is a question for you both. Um, what qualities do you personally possess that would be helpful in a zombie apocalypse? Um, I'm not scared of anything. So I would volunteer to like go out and try to find food or something and I wouldn't I would I would be able to um, take on a leadership role. What about you, Jeff? Um, I'm good with logistics and problem solving, and I'm a, a good shot. I could shoot things from a distance or up close, and I have good reflexes. So I think, I think I'd be able to kill a lot of zombies, and I think I'd be able to formulate a good plan for how to defeat them. If you had to choose a weapon of choice, what would your weapon of choice be? For, for killing zombies? Yeah. Gun. Anything we want? <laughs> yes. A gun. <laughs> like a, la a laser gun? Kind of what if you run out of ammo? With lasers? Well, that's why you would want a laser gun. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about running out of ammo. So it's just, would, maybe it's like based on um, plasma rays or lasers or some kind of photon, some killer photon device that would replenish itself using nuclear power. I would just want like an old timey like pistol. Or just like a nuclear bomb and then just huddle them all into. Uh, arena and blow them all up. <laughs> um, what do you think you would miss the most? Like, you know, if there was a zombie apocalypse? What would we miss the most? Yeah. I would miss um, just like general feelings of safety. Like going to restaurants, probably, because they'd, yeah. they'd be closed. So you would be eating bad food, most likely. You'd be eating canned food, and I like food, so I'd, I think I'd, I would miss going to restaurants. What was your favorite scene to film? My favorite scene was... Well, I really liked this, the, the very first scene where, you, where I'm being shoved into the closet in my room, and it's all four of us kind of shouting at each other and freaking out. That was one of my, the first scenes we shot and it was one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Um, Jeff, what was it like for you? Because obviously you wrote and directed the film, so mm -hmm. what was it like when you seen, so, so, uh, have seen, having seen it come to life, you know, and seeing all these actors saying the lines that you had written? Mm -hmm. What was it like? It's surreal because um, it took, I, I wrote it in 2003, so it took 10, 10 ish years to, to finally make it. And so it's this really long build up, and then all of a sudden it's released, and you have no time, and everything's rushed, and you know, it's not exactly the way you thought it would be, and things are different, and it's just moving so fast that you don't have time to like really put it into perspective until it's all done. 